All right, let's learn how to play Mech Command RTS. This will be part one where we will cover the basics and everything you need to know to play the tutorial and up to mission one. So in review, this is your starting mech that everyone will start with. It's called the Jax. It's a light bipedal. It's kind of a weak mech, but it's good for beginners. Uh, so most importantly, it has this eight, these eight energy gems. And most light mechs, most mechs of each weight class have the same amount of gems. And then a few mechs will have like better generators and they'll have a little bit more, but most of them will be the same within the same weight class. And light, light mechs usually have eight gems. In mech command, you're gonna pay for your movement, your weapons, your boosters, your shields by moving these gems onto your mech board or onto your item cards. That's the primary function of the game. So the Jax comes equipped with two light weapons and both of these uh, operate a little bit differently and I think they'll highlight the, the basically the, the primary stats of the cards really well. So let's take a look at those. The two most important things to understand in Mech Command RTS to play it is how these four stats on the cards work and then the three phases of the round which organize the timing of everything that happens. So let's start with the cards. This is the starting pulse pistol. So every card, for the most part, has four stats. In the upper left corner is the cost, its effect, then down here is its recharge rate, and this is the overheat level. So the cost is how many gems you have to put onto the card to activate it. The pulse pistol costs one, so I would move one gem on there to activate it. Its effect is one damage, so I would take one of my damage cubes and drop it in the target's damage dish. The recharge rate is the amount of energy that comes back from the card to your generator pool at the end of the round. And then the most trickiest stat is probably the overheat level. The overheat level identifies the specific amount of gems that can ever be on the card. So it also kind of determines how many times you can fire and coupled with the recharge rate, kind of depends on how quickly it, it can recharge. So this pulse pistol has an overheat level of two. It has a cost of one. So I could fire this a second time by moving a gem onto the pulse pistol, dropping a damage cube, but now I've reached its overheat level, so I could not fire it again. Let's take a look at the oh, energy blaster. This one's a little bit different. This one costs two, has a damage of three, and an overheat level of two. So if I wanted to fire this, I'd move two onto the energy blaster. I would take three damage cubes, it's a little more energy efficient, and drop it in the target's damage dish. But because I've already reached its overheat level of two with a single shot, I could not fire this again until I cleared up space off the card. Its recharge rate is only one. So during the recharge phase, I would only bring one of these gems back to my generator pool and there'd still be one on there. So that energy will stay. I won't have access to it. And because to fire it again would, have to, would require placing a total of three gems on here. There's one and I have to put two more. I can't fire it again. So this one's gonna take a, a round, a full round to recharge where you can't fire it. It's a little slower to fire. Some of the energy cannons are even slower. They have a overheat level of three and a recharge of one. So you fire it once and you have to wait two rounds before you can fire it, but they have great burst. So that's, that's basically the, that's all of the cards wrap up under the, follow those rules. Let's just talk about movement real quick. Movement is simple, you just take one gem and place it on your mech, I mean on your mech board, and then you can move one hex. You can only pay for and take one movement at a time, so if I wanted to move twice, move two hexes, I'd have to pay one gem, move one hex. Pay one gem, move one hex. So pretty simple. Uh, boosters are the only way to move more than one hex at a time. This is your starting booster. Boosters, every mech has a booster slot. The reverse jointed mechs, which are lighter scout mechs that um, help you like move across the map easier, get objectives and kill support units, they'll have two boosters. But for the most part, only uh, all the mechs only have one booster. Uh, this, one, this particular booster has two energy, a three boost, a recharge rate of two, and a overheat of two. So this means I could uh, activate boosters once by paying two, and then move up to three hexes, and then I would call end boost. Everything in mech command, uh, except for regular movement, requires an announcement. 
So before I fire a weapon, when I fire a weapon, before I fire it, I have to call a hit on an opponent. Or if I'm going to fire my, uh, activate my boosters, I have to call out that that is happening. I would call red boost, and I'd place my two on the booster, count out one, two, three, and then call end boost. So as you can see, boosters also is what allows you to not only move more than one hex at a time, it also allows you to move up elevations. Elevations are important because you can only fire at units at the same elevation level of you. So ground versus ground, rooftop versus rooftop, skyscraper to skyscraper. And this creates a, like separate play areas that you can escape to. Um, you can use a boost to go down elevation, but you can also use a regular movement. So if I had a little bit of energy left here, I could pay one and just move down as normal, as if it was a normal hex. So that covers basically all of your cards except for shield generators, which we'll get into during the damage phase. Let's go over the three phases of Mech Command RTS. So it's divided into three. One is, first is the action phase, then the damage phase, and then the recharge phase. They're all pretty self-explanatory actually, but most of the game all takes place during the action phase. To start the action phase, uh, the designated player would make sure that A, everyone has performed the recharge from the previous round. We'll just start this from scratch. And you make sure that the opponent's damage dish is in front of the other team. So this is the red and blue mechs, but we have the other team's damage dish in front of us for easy access, and, and they have ours, so they can drop damage in there really easily. So the designated player will Flip the sand timer, make sure everyone's ready. Oh, make sure everyone's lights are on. That's a visual cue that they're ready to begin. And then he calls go. And then for the next two minutes or until everyone is done and turns off their light, everyone moves and fires at the exact same time. So I'll be moving, actually this is, this is, uh, this is blue down here. So I gotta move this, I'll boost my, this blue mech. So blue boost, one, two, three, and boost. It's important to call out when you're boosting in your hexes and end boost because while you're boosting, you're invulnerable. You can't have a hit called on you. So let's talk about hits. In order to call a hit on somebody, I have to have line of sight, which is easily seen by rotating your mech. You can always rotate your mech freely. It doesn't require movement. You don't have to do it while you're moving. You can always just rotate your mech at any time. So I have line of sight here on green, so I'm gonna call out the hit. Remember, everything has to be announced in Mech Command. That's what allows everybody else to hear what's happening and kind of keep the you know, tabs on what you're doing while they're also moving. So blue hits green, since I have line of sight. Then I pay for a weapon. I'm gonna fire my starting energy blaster. It costs two gems, so I'm gonna move that from my energy pool onto the energy blaster card itself. It does three damage, so I'm gonna take three damage cubes. These are my own damage cubes, so we can always track where the damage is coming from. And I'm gonna drop it into green. So green just took three damage. There's nothing he can do about it at this time. Once I call a hit and it's successful, if you ever have any doubt about line of sight or if green thought like, no, I don't, I don't think you can hit me there, you just call pause, set the sand timer on its side, and then you can get down and take a look or wiggle your blue light or just check rules, whatever you need to do. Mech Command RTS can always be paused. And then once everyone's clarified the ruling, just call, just flip the sand timer back up and the designated player calls go again. So uh, it, I can only pay, for, I only can pay for and activate one weapon at a time per hit. So if I wanted to hit him again, I'd have to call out again, blue hits green. And this time I only have my pulse pistol left because the energy blaster has already reached its overheat level of two. So I'll move a gem onto the pulse pistol and just do a piddly one damage and drop it into green's damage dish. Uh, green can see me as well right now. So actually he's gonna move on out of the base and green's gonna call a hit on blue. Green hits blue. He's gonna pay for his energy blaster. Take three of his damage dish cubes and drop it into the blue damage dish. Oh, as I was saying, the, uh, once you call a hit and it's a successful hit, it's considered complete, even, even though I still need to process it. So if I called a hit, a uh, successful hit, blue on green, it's a legal hit, I have line of sight. And then right afterwards, he boosts away Green boost, one, two, three, end boost. It doesn't matter, I called the hit before his boost, I called the hit while I had line of sight, so 
it doesn't matter, I can still get to pay for the weapon and drop the damage. And that's basically how uh, all of the firing and shooting operates in Mech Command. Once you're done, once you're out of energy, you turn off your light, or once you're just chosen to not spend any more energy because you may want to save some energy for your shields during the damage phase, you turn off your light. Once all the lights are off, it immediately becomes the damage phase. Alternatively, once the timer runs out, anyone can call time. At the beginning of the damage phase, you take care and look for any delayed damage effects. Sometimes there's mines. Sometimes you're on a building that was destroyed and it, you fall down and take some falling damage. But for the most part, immediately what you do is you switch your damage dishes. And now every mech has to deal with and assign the damage that they took over the course of the action phase. So let's take a look at blue here. It took three, it took three damage, but I have three energy I saved wisely. And so I can use that to pay for some shields. Now the starting shield gener generator costs one, shields one, and has an overheat uh, level of four. That means I could put up to four energy gems on this shield generator, and I would shield that much energy, so I uh, that much damage. So I have three, so I could block all three of these damage cubes. I would take them and just place them next to the shield generator card temporarily so everyone can see kind of how much you shielded and once that's been verified, you can just return it to the player. But any remaining damage, let's say that Green did a little bit more damage to me, like with his extra pulse pistols, and I took five damage, I'd shield three, and now I have to si assign those other two points of damage. If you look on your mech board, you'll see a bunch of little circles uh, connected by lines. These are your armor points, and you can assign damage to any open armor point that you want, so you can spread damage across your whole mech but they are organized into little groups. So like this uh, right weapon slot here is attached to two armor points. Once those two armor points are filled, I would lose that weapon slot. Any attached items would be destroyed. Any energy on the card is returned to your mech board. There's leg sections that if they're destroyed, they cause movement penalties. If you lose both legs, you can't move at all. Of course, you can still rotate and boost. And then finally, you have some green armor slots. And once all your green armor slots are filled, then the mech is destroyed. Once everyone has assigned damage, you can kind of take a look around and make sure everyone has assigned their damage, passed back their uh, any shielded damage. Let's put these on green. Then it immediately becomes the recharge phase. This is the last round of the phase. I mean, last phase of the round. And in the recharge phase, the first thing you do is recharge all the energy that is on your mech board. So everything that is on the that you spent for movement comes back to your generator pool. And then all of the cards recharge according to their recharge rate. So the starting uh, booster, it recharges everything. It recharges two. Pulse pistol recharges two, so there's only one on there. The shield generator recharges three, so if I had used all four, one would be left behind. And the energy blaster recharges one. So out of all that energy, I get everything back except for the one on the energy blaster, and that will have to wait until a following recharge phase before that will become open again, and because of its overheat level, before I can fire it again. At the end of the recharge phase, you check for, you collect any objective tokens, load and unload a, uh, objective points, collect uplink points, and then you check for a victory condition, and if the victory condition has been met, the mission is completely over, immediately over. And then that is a full round of Mech Command RTS. The designated player at this time would make sure that the damage dishes are switched back to the other side. Everyone would turn on their lights again. He'd make a double check to make sure everyone was ready, that they've recharged from the last round. This guy had not recharged. And then he'd call go, and the action starts again. And that's all you need to play the first tutorial of Mech Command RTS. Let's go into mission one's thing. So each mission, you start out with the six page tutorial script. You just read it out loud, it's interactive. It gives people a little bit of practice on all the procedures and maneuvers. Mission one doesn't use support units yet. So it, but it does use um, objective tokens. In particular, these retrieval tokens. To pick up a retrieval token, you just have to be adjacent to it during the recharge phase. So you can't pick them up during the action phase. 
you have to wait until the recharge phase. And if I'm adjacent to it, I can pick it up. Mechs can pick up retrieval tokens, but most of the other objectives in the game, like salvage tokens, uplink buildings, they require a support unit, which we'll get into in part two. So during the recharge phase, as long as I control this object retrieval token, I can pick it up, put it on my mech. You can only carry one at a time. And mostly, often you're trying to pick these objective tokens up or secure them and bring them back to your base. Sometimes try to flee the map with them or sometimes insert them to the enemy base. But you're picking up and moving them somewhere. Uh, the one aspect about objective tokens is that you have to control it before you can pick it up. And in order to control it, I have to have more allied units adjacent to it during the recharge phase than the enemy. So if the green mech was here, I'm here, we're tied, no one gets to pick it up. If it was an uplink building, no one would control that uplink building. If I had one of my allies support units adjacent to me, I now have two units adjacent. He has one, so one of my units would get to pick this. We control it, and that means we get to operate it, use it, pick it up. And that's it for part one of Mech Command RTS. If you have any specific questions about that, just go ahead and pose them in, uh, post them in the questions down below if you'd like or in the comments field and we'll answer them as we can.